Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Black Panther tie-ins into the Secret Invasion crossover. A really good crossover. Like I really enjoyed it. And it had one really good characteristic to it. That not only the main story was pretty good, the tie-ins were really solid. Some really interesting side stories uh, took place. And this particular Black Panther story, it's pretty good. There's a couple things that I really liked and a couple things I didn't like took place in Black Panther's issues 39 to 41, written by Jason Aaron, illustrated by Jeff DiPaolo. And without further ado, let's get into this. So we have the scrolls that are about to invade Wakanda. Some of them are a little bit worried. They know Wakanda has never been invaded. No foreign forces have been able to set foot in Wakanda territory. But we have like the general there saying, like, don't worry, we have superior technology. We're going to wipe these guys off the face of the planet. We've already invaded uh, Wakanda society with our with our spies. For those who don't know, scrolls are shapeshifters. But the thing is, when they arrive, they discover that Black Panther and the Wakandas in general have already weeded the um, the spies out. They've all been executed. This sort of spooks the scrolls. Like, oh shit, how did they know about us? Because this is like one interesting aspect of the story. Is like most of the Marvel universe was were totally blindsided by the secret invasion they didn't see this coming they didn't know they were infiltrated by scrolls and like there's one exception to this is like the illuminati and a couple of members of the, of the members of the inv um of in invasion of the inv avengers there we go i couldn't say it and nick fury outside of that everyone else was pretty much blindsided by this whole situation but wakanda was ready they were already prepared so the thing is they're about to attack with the ships wakanda uses this weapon that Pretty much destroys all of the of uh, the skull ships. Their weaponry just doesn't work anymore. It also sort of backfires on Wakanda. They can't use their technology. But the thing is, what Black Panther was planning is to get both out, both of the armies out into the battlefield and use Wakanda's superior warrior fighting style to defeat these guys in hand to hand combat and. From this point on, it's just a straight-off war between the Skrulls and the Wakandans. It's pretty badass, uh, the way the story is told. Uh, the art by Jeff DiPaolo, I do have an issue. Like At moments, it's incredible. It's pretty epic, beautiful, very dark. Like um, Coloring plays a major, uh, um, a big factor in the story. It was colored by Lee, the Lou Ridge. Lou Ridge? I think uh, I probably butchered his last name at moments. It really adds to the story. And at other moments between the coloring and art, it just looks like shit. Like, I don't know what the hell happened. Like here, it's pretty good. Like this is beautiful. Fantastic job. Also, but at other moments, it just like, I'm going to see when it happens. Like, it just looks like shit. It just feel, feels very lazy at moments. Like, the quality from page to page goes down very, very quickly. So, the thing is, the battle rages on. The story just really shows off how much of a badass Black Panther is. Shows off he can be a general, a head of state. Yeah, he can deal with a full-on invasion. Nothing shakes this guy's um, <laughs> will and stuff like that. Here, you also, you can see him during this time. He had Black Knight's Ebony Blade. So that was pretty cool to see him use this in the war. It really shows off how ruthless the Wakandans are. They have to dis uh, defend their homeland. So they're just killing scrolls left and right. Like they're, they're not forgiving anyone's lives in this battle. So as the story progresses, the story just really builds on the fact that Black Panther is a totally badass. He takes down this super scroll that's insanely powerful designed to take him down panther's able to dispose of this guy as i said before super ruthless and the one thing i didn't like about the story i just felt like it was just it was sort of half-assed too like uh is they capture using the shape-shifting capabilities scrolls they trick black panther they're able to capture him to capture him and storm and um, so they start torturing him because they want to know all the secrets of Wakanda and stuff like that. And um, what happens, what they discover is that the people that they've been torturing, actually, they're scrolls, And that Black Panther and Storm were like controlling these guys remotely. 
So it's like this whole bait and switch thing that's never really explained how they did it. Like, it just feels really sloppy, this particular aspect. They don't explain how they were remotely controlling these particular scrolls and stuff like that, that um, they had captured, like these, find these electronic devices in their mounts um, so they can talk through. But the thing is that you never see when they have this uh, particular, where they're swiped, the real deal with the, the scroll flakes. But the thing is they fool the scrolls. Black Panther and Storm are able to infiltrate the ship. They kill them in general. And basically what happens after this is Wakandans go full on genocide. They kill every single squirrel. Like the, it's just like Black Panther in this particular co- uh, crossover. Black Panther and Cyclops in the X-Men tie-in are freaking ruthless. They take no prisoners. They kill everyone. So... It's a pretty good good read. I, it's not fundamental to the main story, but it just really builds on the whole idea that Black Panther is going to do whatever it takes to come on top, protect his nation, show him off as this pretty badass general. And I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.